A finely malted, well hot pint of your foaming best, please, landlord. I mean, well, <laughs> landlady, that ought to be, Dora. Usually, Fred. Yes, and I'll have a drink as well, please, love. <laughs> Not bad. Well, the last time I saw them, they were. Whoops. Oh, it looks like rain again. Does it? I shouldn't worry about it, love. Nobody will ever notice. Mmm. <laughs> Delicious. <laughs> good to have him back. Same as you, quite a bit of breeze. Hi, Dora. Two bites, please. Nothing to do today, then, Chris. No, it's such luck. This is a working lunch. Morning, Fred. Chris? With you in a moment, love. This is yours, Chris. What's that, Fred? Here, housewives and the unemployed are much more likely to join open university courses than when it first opened. How do you mean, is that mine? Well, you're a statistician, aren't you? I mean, you do st st maths at the open university, don't you? Is this your work? No, not that sort of thing. That's statistics about us. I write courses about statistics. That's another department, not mine. You don't even do your own statistics? And you're a statistician? My God! You have a cushy life, don't you? I don't know about that. Seems pretty pressured to me. Got to work over lunch. You spend all your time finding out about things that everybody knows already. Yeah, yeah. Like what, Fred? Well, look here. It says the Central Statistical Office reckoned that we all got poorer last year. It's not even last year. It's two years out of date. Ask anyone. Ask me. We'll all tell you. We're all worse off. We don't need a bloody central statistical office to tell us something we already know and to tell us two years late. I don't know about everyone else. I only really know about me. What's he on about now? I don't know. He seems to have read something that's disagreed with him. What is all this, Fred? Social trends. Statisticians proving that they do something for a living. It's just this government's way of hiding things from us that really matter. Like what? Well, telling us things we already know. Look, it says here that watching TV is the most popular leisure activity. I don't know there's much to watch on TV these days. When are we going to see you on one of these OU programmes, Chris? <laughs> He's too busy not doing statistics. You leave him alone, Fred. At least he does something useful for a living. You'll have to excuse me, Fred. I've got work to do. Ah, statistically speaking. <laughs> so what else is there in this paper of yours, then? Oh, it's not just the paper, Dora. It's all these civil servants, these central statistical office people, telling us things that are obvious to a three-year-old. We're getting poorer. Of course we are. The rich get rich, the poor get poorer. Always has been and always will be. Well, that might be true, but it's not that easy, Fred. We're getting older. Too right. <laughs> no, not our society like. We've got more pensioners now. They're poor. So it's obvious we're getting poorer, just more poor people. Ah, rich and poor. So it's two different worlds. Always has been and always will be. And who needs a statistician to tell you that? Why, mine? How do I know there's a rich and a poor? Well, look out into your car park. Look at all the BMWs there. That's rich for you. Yes, but were they poor when they had Fiat's and Ford's and Larders? Hey, I had a Larder. <laughs> you know what I mean. I don't reckon there's a rich and a poor, just a lot of people making different amounts of money. Rich and poor, rich and poor, and never the twain shall meet. Just a lot of people earning different amounts of money. If you're a statistician, that kind of thing is commonplace. You're responsible for all the world's ills, and there's nothing you can teach anyone. Let's leave this lot, for a while at least, and see what statistics really has to say. An academic statistician, like myself, is often more interested in developing the theory of statistics than in immediate application to the real world. So when confronted with the pub bore, we're often in no better position to answer the challenges than is anyone else. Or are we? Well, I have two things in my favor. One is access to the right sources. Another is some idea of what I'm looking for. A good place to start, then, is here at the university library.
report Fred was reading about is filed here somewhere. Here we are. This is Social Trends, an annual publication of the Central Statistical Office. This is the 1993 edition, so the most recent data it can contain relate to 1992, and there are some earlier figures as well. Let's take a look. If we look at the contents page, we find the material in it corresponds closely to the administrative functions of government. And that's because the main user of these statistics is government. The open university statistic that Fred was on about should be in the education section. Must be around here somewhere. Here we are, table 321 on page 46. So in 1971, 10% of the intake were housewives. And by 1990, that had gone up to 17%. A little bit down, actually, on the 1981 figures. But that tells us that OU students are more likely to be housewives nowadays. What we want to know is whether housewives are more likely to be OU students. And that's not quite the same thing. Let me show you what I mean by reference to the other newspaper item, and that referred to the unemployed. In 1971, 2% of OU students were unemployed, 2% of 20,000, which is, I guess, 400. By 1990, 9% of OU students, that's 9% of 18,000, that's, oh, 1,620. So we're taking in about four times as many unemployed students now than back in 1971. But aren't there a lot more unemployed people about? What we want to know is what the 400 students back in 71 or the 1,600 students in 1990 are as a proportion of the total unemployed, not as a proportion of the total number of OU students. Well, maybe this is uh, something that social trends should tell us about as well. Chapter 4 is all about employment, but I've had a preliminary scan through here and I can't quite find what I want. But this is where being a statistician pays off. I know where else to get those numbers. This is the Employment Department's Employment Gazette. And this is the most recent issue, which will give me the numbers for 1990. And I can look back at the old bound volumes of the same thing to find the numbers for 1971 as well. And it turns out that the 400 unemployed OU students back in 1971 came from about 800,000 unemployed in total. And that in 1990, there were more like 2.3 million, let's say 2.4 million, because that's nicely three times the previous figure, unemployed in total. So the number of unemployed OU students has gone up fourfold. The number of unemployed in total has just gone up threefold. So it looks as though the newspaper was right. The unemployed are a bit more likely to join the OU. Well, that was a pretty long sort of search to answer some pretty simple questions, and you might think it's enough to trust newspaper reports. But sometimes you have to be a bit careful. Social Trends and other such publications present data that has already been processed and to some extent interpreted for us. This might, or might not, answer our questions, either immediately or with a bit of effort. But statisticians need to be able to go back to the raw data, to do their own interpretations, to answer questions, and perhaps to paint a broader picture as well. Well, pictures of the data are indeed going to be the main focus of this program. And the tool for producing the pictures will be the computer. But the first question is, where do we get the raw data? I use the computer for that as well. Using Janet, the joint academic network which links all UK universities, I inspected the catalogue of the ESRC data archive. Now I wanted statistics about income. After searching over 4,000 entries, the catalogue reported back. There were 1,027 surveys covering income. One survey stood out. 
the annual family expenditure survey, or FES. That's what I decided to ask for. Well, I didn't want all of the FES. You'll see in a moment how big it is and just how impossible that would be. Instead, I really wanted a subset over, um, say, 15 years. I also wanted to concentrate on wealth, or at least earnings, and not on the expenditure part of the family expenditure survey. My electronic catalogue has helped a lot, but more traditional paperwork is involved too. This is how I told them which bits of the FES I wanted, and I also had to sign a contract. Then I mailed it to the data archive, and in real life, I waited for the data to arrive. But to make the story complete, let's go across country to Colchester and see what happened at the other end. The data archive is sited here at the University of Essex. To find out more about what it is and what it does, and to follow the progress of my application, I'm going to speak first to Professor Denise Leavesley. We're the largest repository of, of social and economic information in the country, and the whole of the UK. And we hold the data on behalf of government departments, academics and others who provide it to us so that we can make it available to users for them to carry out secondary analysis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People like me, I guess. Yes, people like you. We hold all of the data in machine-readable form, and we send it out to the users in a variety of different ways. We hold about 3,500 to 4,000 data sets, and then we've got another few thousand opinion polls as well as those. So we really are quite big. Mm -hmm. And, as I said, the data's held in machine-readable form. So, just to give you an example, the data set that you're interested in, that's the Family Expenditure Survey, if you were to put in a pile all of the questionnaires that have been completed by the individuals and the households who participated in that survey for just one year, then you'd get a pile of paper that was over five times the size of that tower block, so five tower blocks of paper. And we hold all of that on one magnetic tape. So uh, how are you going to send me the data, Denise? Well, nowadays, we'll probably send it to you via the network. Mm -hmm. But uh, in the past, you would have received your data on one of these, mm -hmm. a magnetic tape. And this magnetic tape would hold one year's worth of, of the family expenditure survey. On the other hand, we could use floppy disks. Mm -hmm. We'd need eight to ten of these in order to send you a year's data. But we have more choice these days. We can use these cartridges. This little one here can contain ten times as much data as yeah. this. So that can contain 10 years of the Family Expenditure mm -hmm. Survey. Some of our users are working on PCs, and they don't have any other equipment at all, just their PCs. And in that case, we can send them this little bit mm -hmm. of hardware. We download the data onto that, and then when you receive it, you copy the data onto your machine, and you send it back right. to us. Unfortunately, we're still having to send the documentation yep. in paper form. And this is the documentation we'd be sending you for the Family yeah. Expenditure Survey. And it's critical that you receive this, because yeah. otherwise you really can't understand the data that we send mm -hmm. you. I see. There's a lot of it, isn't there? There is, I'm afraid, yes. It's quite a lot to, to understand. Meanwhile, the archive had copied my data, packed the documentation, and was sending the parcel back to me. Well, now I've got the data, I'll switch from my terminal connected to Janet. I don't need that network anymore. And I'll use my personal computer. I've already loaded the data into my statistics package. And the first thing I want to do is to examine the files to see what they look like. Well, as you might expect, row upon row of figures, each one corresponding to a return form from the FES, each row with the entries I requested. For instance, the first household has one adult, one no child, no, no children, 
lots of other information, and so on. So with these data, I can begin to address some of the statements that Fred and Dora made. The rich and the poor, two worlds, always has been, always will be. I don't reckon there's a rich and poor, just a lot of people earning different amounts of money. Now, the first thing that I'll do is to ask for a picture of these data. I've got a range of pictures to choose from and a lot of data. I've selected a histogram for a first look. So what I have here is a histogram of household income for 1977. The horizontal scale represents weekly income and the heights of the bars show how many families fell into that category. Well, I've started in 1977 so that we can move forward in time and see how things change as we come up to the present day. Up to the 1991 data, in fact, because that's the most recent that we have. But what can we see here? The most obvious feature is that there are two humps. Technically, that's what's called a bimodal distribution. And that's one up for Fred. The rich and the poor, two worlds. Always has been, always will be. Well, this distribution does suggest that there are two overlapping populations. One centered around this figure is what we might call the poor, while this, centered here, is the rich. So there's some evidence here that Fred was right, and society is, to some extent, made up of the rich and the poor. Dora's claim that there was just a spread of earnings seems to be a bit wrong. But what happens if we move forward from 1977? This is 1978, except that to make the histograms comparable, I've scaled the later ones to 1977 prices to adjust for inflation. Now, what happens as we move forward to the present day? Now, the impression is of some of the people who made up the rich hump moving towards the right and others moving into the poor hump. Now, that resonates with some of the statements from back in the pub. We're poorer. Of course we are. The rich get rich and the poor get poorer. Always has been, always will be. That isn't exactly right. The poor get poorer, some of the rich get richer, some of the rich get poorer too, at least over this time span. Well, in one sense, we've answered some of Fred's challenges. But of course, there's a lot more that might have been said. Uh, same again, please, Dora. Statistics. You can't really compare things like the poor. We're all getting older. Like I said, there's more pensioners. Stands to reason that the figures we show we're all getting poorer. My point exactly. Can you have one yourself? No, not just now. Thanks, Fred. Mind you, we're in the southeast. We're doing all right. Not like to be on time side. Why not? There's lovely beer in that part of the world. <laughs> you know what I mean. I see Tracy's got herself a flat in town. Mmm. Good luck to her, I say. Wouldn't have happened in my day. You stayed at home until you got married. That's something that's changing. More and more of them setting up home alone. I don't know where the money comes from half the time. Mmm. And having families, too, before they're married. And without a man. <laughs> Hardly, Fred. Well, you know what I mean, Dora. I mean, everywhere you look, there's more and more single parents. Well, less children, anyway. I'm glad I've not got a large family in this day and age. Yeah. I wonder what the statisticians would tell us about that, that we didn't know already, eh? Ah. Well, the statistician might have quite a bit to say. There's plenty there to work on. Let's start at the beginning. Of course, you can't really compare things like the poor. We're all getting older. There's more pensioners. It stands to reason the figures we show we're all getting poorer. Well, how about pensioners? How do they figure as a percentage of the population? This is where a different display can be helpful. And this one shows the proportion of pensioners compared to what we might call the poor, the bottom 10% of earners. The most obvious feature is this dramatic dip in 1983. That's because unemployment went up, but the number of pensioners didn't. But by 1991, the proportion is definitely coming down. Well, Dora loses that one. Pensioners are decreasing as a percentage of the poor. Not as a percentage of the whole population, but definitely as a percentage of the poor. 
This suggests that our first analysis was sensible. There are more poor because of some of the rich getting poorer. In my day, you stayed at home until you got married. That's something that's changing. More and more of them setting up home alone. So what are we looking for now? We can ignore the income part of the data and just concentrate on counts of people in households. And this time, a bar chart is the appropriate picture. This is what it looked like in 1977. I'm inviting you to predict what changes, if any, we see by 1991. Two-person households are always the commonest. But watch again and concentrate on how single-person households increase at the expense of three- and four-person ones. This one's one up to Dora. There is a trend towards households comprised of single individuals. But it's not so much an answer as an invitation to probe more deeply, to find out why. Dora suggested that people were leaving home earlier. Is that the reason for this? Or are people getting married later? We don't know, and these figures aren't going to tell us. Mind you, this is the southeast. We're doing all right. I'd not like to be on time site. Regional comparisons invite the use of another of the pictorial devices available to me, the box plot. Here's the data for the northeast. In 1991, the median salary is about £75 a week at 77 prices. Half the population earn between £30 and £130 a week. The majority earn up to £220. And there are a few very high salaries. Now, what makes box plots really useful is that I can display the information for the household incomes of all 12 regions in one easy-to-read picture. The North East is at the top. Its median salary is much worse than that for Greater London and the South East, which, as predicted, has the highest median. The science of statistics has helped us get an insight into the truth. We've answered questions, really quite important research questions, by analysing data. The collection and analysis of data <laughs> has been greatly enhanced by the computer revolution. And we've seen the power of graphical methods to help us explore our data. There are many other statistical methods around, too, and some of these will feature in the programs to come. Oh, and one more thing. <laughs> Hello, Chris. How's business? Passable, Fred? I got caught up in some statistics. Oh, yeah? Anything special? No, just getting an insight into the truth, or otherwise, of what the man in the pub is saying. What man's this, then? Ah, oh, no one you know, Dora. Pint, please. Chris, I've been meaning to tell you. Do you know where the word statistics comes from? Yeah, I do. It's the Greek word for state. Did you know that? Yeah, I did, yeah. Mind you, it's him that gets an estate over statistics. Now then, when are we going to see you in one of these open university programs? Yeah. 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 Yeah.